Hey, I'm Stephen Lobo. And I am Vic Sahai, uh, and we are in the film Afghan Luke, and you are watching Press Plus One. The Canadian film section, people. I am Mateen. This is Luke. Well, let me guess. Journalist. This place has its own rules. You can't just come here and tell them what to do. I'm looking for some bodies. They were shot by snipers. Could have been Fred. There's a sniper named Fred. Hard to tell the good guys from the bad guys here until they try to kill you. It's it's just so great to read something that's different, first of all, um, that has a, a unique voice and uh, an original uh, originality speaks volumes in itself. Um, and then and then um, learning who's involved in the cast and 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 Mike Clattenburg, this being his first departure, um, and. The role. I was just. I, I immediately fell in love with the role, and um, immediately connected with it, um, and felt I knew this guy, even though, you know, he lives in a far off land, and I have nothing in common with him, seemingly. But I just there was something in the writing that, I, I felt I resonated with. So, yeah. I felt that. Um no, I mean, yeah, absolutely. I, I agree with a lot of that. Um, I, I think that... You disagree with some of it? Well, I just don't think your role was that great. <laughs> um, I think that uh, there was an irreverence in the script that I responded to, uh, a kind of lack of preciousness, uh, an ability to go for kind of wild humor and, and madness and gonzo-ness uh, that is very Clattenburg-esque, I think, um, that made me kind of want to jump on board. Yeah, absolutely. Um, since you brought it up, uh, Stephen, I wanted to ask you about your characters because it, it was, the, the characters were unique. It wasn't a typical war movie. And the, watching these characters, it was almost like watching four guys anywhere. And it, um, <laughs> questions over, it's coming. So I just wanted to ask you guys about, about uh, the, your roles and what kind of research you did and what, what, what kind of, re, you know, how, how you were inspired. Well, I was inspired by fear of <laughs> not knowing what I was getting myself into. I, like, as I said, I, I felt like I got a hit off the character, but when I auditioned for it, I, was, I, I used like a, an Arabic accent, which I knew was wrong, but I, I just threw it out there because I didn't, you know, I didn't know what it, what it would sound like or what it would look like. So luckily I was, I was cast um, and then started, you know, out of in a frenzy, just try, trying to read as much as I can about it. Uh, the creative consultant on the movie Wafi Gran, who is a, a political science student at SFU. Mm -hmm. But from Afghanistan. But from Afghanistan. Um, you know, I latched on to him, and then once I got hold of him, I, 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 I didn't let go. And, you know, we went through history together, um, starting from the Soviets up until present day. And, uh, of course, on accent and language, Pashtun, Pashtu and Dari, um, yeah, there's a, there's a, a little um, stage direction in the in the movie where it says Mateen rants, mm -hmm. and filling that out, you know, I was like, what, what would this guy rant about? And jamming that out with Wafi actually was was uh, was so informative and and uh, filled it out so much. And, and once I got that, once I got his point of view, I felt like I could I could really run with the role. Um, of course, you play a journalist in the movie. And yes. A lot of conflicting because there's, you know, there's camaraderie between your character and, and Nick Stahl's character. But and you know, at the end. I, I did spend a lot of time with journalists, actually, who went over there and, uh, you know, hounded them and bothered them and picked their brains on the process. It was just really important for me to know what the experience was like as much as possible and um but he has kind of an his own set of rules and that that he considers uh with a deep integrity and 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 set of ethics i guess um and kind of unapologetically ambitious in that way but but believes in what he's doing kind of in, in his own kind of world and he noted he pointed out camaraderie with luke yeah. which you could argue wasn't in the like, I didn't I didn't read that in Imran at the beginning, but I think that's something that you might have that you brought to it that actually yeah, made it, it made made the it. made the rifts at the end even even better. I think that what one of the the ways I wanted to track the film in terms of Imran and Luke's story was that there's a kind of a a kind of a childish back and forth that kind of grows and grows until there's almost there's a moment there's a moment where he's sort of saying good luck good luck out there, but the last thing that happens when he's truly an ugly moment yeah. that's not 
funny or light or childish anymore. And I talked to Nick about that, that I really wanted this last little bit where he goes, you know, you know, get, you know, where it's really two dogs fighting over this bone and in a, in a most ferocious way. Um, we touched, we talked a little bit about Mike Kleinberg already, but what was it like working with him? Because I'm, he has directed other things besides Trailer Park Boys, but uh, I, I think he really steps out of his comfort zone you know, making Afghan Luke. It was a treat to work with some someone who was so collaborative and adventurous. You know, there was something, he's a musician too, and there was something in sort of, I, I'm not, I've never played in a band, but I, I kind of felt like I was in a rock band, you know, like, you know, a, anything was game. There was nothing too, as you said, there was nothing precious or delicate about it. Um, we were just sort of jamming, you know, and, you know, everybody was new who they were and you know every, you know all the actors really kind of we were all you know had a sense of what we were doing but then and then we would come and we would kind of jam out these scenes is what is what it, that's kind of how it felt for me and i think he has a lot of confidence in allowing us to kind of just take out the research that we're coming at no 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 nothing hugely planned and and colliding in these scenes and allowing those scenes to play out fully ad-libbing improving whatever's going to happen let's see what happens in the moment allowing the accidents allowing the mistakes it just creates an alchemy of of reality i think was there a lot of uh, ad-libbing improv I did do a lot. I, I would kind of open up scenes and kind of just start to riff and, and feel it out. And uh, I like to work like that. I think it creates a, a, an electricity. Uh, and it's not about jokes. It's about kind of just being in character um, speaking and, and feeling it out and responding as you would and, and allowing it not to be a clean one. You say one thing, I say one thing, allowing it to be a little... Uh, um, a little dirtier, and uh, and he was very open to that, as were all the actors. So, f for me, it, there was a lot. Team is my fixer. Why do they call them fixers? These guys are supposed to keep you alive. My guy is stoned out of his mind. She was 